In Space Watch today, SpaceX is investigating a mishap during a test of its Crew Dragon capsule. A plume of reddish smoke was seen drifting above the test site at Cape Canaveral, Florida on Saturday. SpaceX called the malfunction an anomaly, but didn't say whether there was an explosion. No injuries were reported. In a statement, SpaceX said, quote, ensuring that our systems meet rigorous safety standards and detecting anomalies like this prior to flight are the main reasons why we test. This could be a major setback for SpaceX and NASA. They were planning to launch astronauts into space this summer for the first time in eight years. So let's bring in CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood. He joins us from Merritt Island, Florida. Bill, thanks so much for being with us. Do you know a little bit more about what exactly went wrong in this test? Very little about what actually went wrong. We do know what the vehicle was. This was the same SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule that they launched back in March on an unpiloted test flight to the space station. They were in the process of preparing that same capsule for what they call an in-flight abort test. That's where uh, early this summer they had planned to put it back on top of a rocket, launch it again, and activate its abort rocket motors to prove that the capsule could safely pull a crew away from a malfunctioning booster. Mm. So they were getting ready for that test, an abort motor test at, on the ground at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, when what they're calling an anomaly happened and what virtually everyone thinks was an outright explosion. We don't know that yet. They haven't provided any details, but that cloud of smoke uh, looked pretty significant. Well, that's certainly bad news since we know that SpaceX and NASA are working to send astronauts to the International Space Station in just a few months. As you know, American astronauts haven't launched aboard a U.S. spacecraft since 2011. Is this failure likely to impact those plans? Well, I think there's no question it's going to impact the launch schedule. The question is, how much? You know, unless NASA waives the requirement for this in-flight abort test, if that still has to happen first, SpaceX is going to have to ready another capsule, get it ready to fly, test all of its systems, run the test, the in-flight abort test, before you'll clear the way for a crew to get on board another one of these Crew Dragon spacecraft and actually fly. But I think the the nature of this in incident uh, would seem to me, uh, because you got to put people on board the, the real one when you get ready to fly, they're going to have to be real sure whatever caused this problem has been resolved successfully, and that's not going to be a quick process, I don't think. Of course, especially with with uh, humans on board. That's Absolutely. super important. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but this spacecraft, the one that failed this weekend, was the same one that successfully launched right. an unpiloted mission to the space station in March. So how could that have been successful and then something like this happen now? Well, remember, when they launched back in March, it was to test the system's ability to get to orbit, rendezvous with the station, and come back, and it did all of that. The test that they were in the process of carrying out when this incident occurred uh, was a test of the, of the spacecraft's abort system. Uh, it's equipped with these motors called Super Draco rocket motors that imagine you have a launch going on and the booster has a catastrophic failure. These motors would instantly fire on computer, computer command to pull that capsule away from the rocket. That's what they were testing on the ground when something went wrong. And we, we really have had no details. We don't know if it involved the Super Draco motors themselves, uh, perhaps one of these high pressure tanks they used to pressurize the propellant system, one of those could have ruptured. Any number of things could have led to this, what they're calling an anomaly. They've provided no details at all about uh, what could be at the, at the heart of this. And so we're just gonna have to stand by and wait for the investigators to figure it out and let us know what happened. So with SpaceX holding all these details so close to the vest, we're presuming that at least it's sharing information with NASA, correct? Because NASA has to have enough confidence that it can launch astronauts into space. So they must at least know what's going on, right? Well, one, one would assume that. Uh, the nature of these commercial contracts that SpaceX and Boeing have with NASA to build these commercial cruise ships, uh, the companies get a lot of leeway in what they have to tell the press and the public uh, about what's going on technically with their program. Uh, I sent emails over the weekend to various NASA officials and was told, you know, NASA didn't have anybody there when this test was going on. That's considered a SpaceX test. It's their vehicle. Uh, they're the ones running it, and therefore NASA is deferring to SpaceX uh, to tell us, you know, exactly what happened at some point. I agree with you. One assumes that NASA is in the loop, uh, but 
they simply don't talk about these things. It's very frustrating if you're a reporter. And yeah. Obviously, remember the public trying to follow along. We just don't know. It's one of those places where you can see a little bit of tension potentially, you know, arising between the private government sectors of a, a major operation like this. Yeah, no question. I mean, I do think the NASA engineering community will be uh, plugged into this investigation as it moves forward. Uh, what they know at this point, however, is a mystery. And even if they did know, uh, they, NASA doesn't share the information because it's a SpaceX spacecraft. Mm -hmm. It's up to the company to tell us. Now, you know, the interesting thing about all this is back in the day when NASA was responsible for every aspect of it, like the space shuttle, they're required by law to tell the public what's going on. Right. That is not the case with these commercial contracts. It is the company's hardware, and they've got the responsibility, not NASA. Absolutely. It's something we, we, we reporters have got to get used to, right? <laughs> I guess. It's very frustrating. It is, yeah, it is a little frustrating. All right, Bill Harwood, we thank you so much for your time. Sure thing.